In a survey on National Public Radio, researchers listed the most repeated reasons why people quit their jobs. Thought I'd provide these for you in case you know you might need that information. These were listed in random order. The top five reasons given by people for quitting their jobs in every area of industry, the professions and business were the following. First, their work had lost its meaning. They were no longer seeing the point of their service. They were no longer inspired by their job. They had lost enthusiasm for their employment. Second, they were not well treated. They were not well treated by their bosses or their customers or their coworkers. They didn't receive encouragement for their efforts at doing a good job. No feedback or too much negative feedback, so they quit. Number three, they weren't getting the support they needed to do their jobs. Perhaps it was not enough tools or manpower or resources to do a good job. Many left because they felt that they were the only ones who really cared about the work and they had too much responsibility. They felt others were just putting too much on them. Number four, they lacked growth opportunity. Theirs was, as we say, a dead end job, or they felt that they were doing the same old thing. Not just a question of advancement, but also an issue of boredom with a task that no longer provided personal growth for them. And then number five, they lacked financial incentive. Many left because they felt that the money they received was not in line with the effort or the results that they were getting. You know, just paying a person their salary is not necessarily a motivation for service that is over and above the norm. People need incentives, they need rewards for good work. I had a boss once that said to me, your reward is that you have a job tomorrow. So that sort of attitude. I think many people here can relate to several of these points when thinking about our own jobs or careers and how we feel at times like quitting. Man, I don't need this, you know. Not enough money for me to be doing this job. I mean, you know, I, we could come up with all the things that we say to ourselves when we're this close to just throwing in the towel. Now in the report, they didn't give information on what we should do when we begin to grow tired of our work or begin to look for a new job. Most counselors would say, however, that people go through several jobs or careers in a lifetime. I think now we're like at five, something like that. And that these feelings are usually a signal that an adjustment is due at your present employment, or the time has come to begin searching or training for a new job, new career. The point I'd like to make with this information is that the same pattern and the same temptation to quit in the service of the Lord happens as well. And we need to recognize the signs and know how to deal with it. In other words, we're often tempted to just quit the Lord. So why do people quit the church? You know, people who are members of the church and who serve the Lord Jesus often just quit. They quit coming to services uh, regularly Usually starts with Sunday night, so, you know, I'm taking a, as an example, someone that always comes, you know, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, they're in the habit of doing that. And the quitting sequence is usually they stop coming Sunday nights and then maybe Bible class starts skipping that. And then Wednesday night, something else takes up their time. And then worship, well, you know, it used to be every Sunday, now it's every second Sunday, now it's every month, every first Sunday of the month, then it's Christmas and Easter. They quit giving a portion of their wealth to the Lord. They quit serving others in the church. They quit volunteering. They quit having fellowship or participating in events. They quit reading their Bible. They quit sharing their faith. They quit praying. And finally, they just quit being faithful members. Oh, there are a lot of reasons given for quitting. Too busy with work. I have a family, you know. 
We just moved. Whatever. <coughs> schedules of school, sports schedules, too conflicting with church. Or we don't like what's going on in the church, too modern, too slow, too much, too little, too fast, too slow, too big, too wide, too, too, whatever. You, you fill in the blank. Or we don't agree with the elders or the preachers of their program, their personality, their preaching style, their priorities. We just don't agree. Of course, when we want to quit, there are any number of excuses that will pop up immediately to help us do what we want to do. And when we are determined to quit, in my experience, I found any excuse will do. Well, the Bible talks about the problems associated with the temptation to quit the church or quit the faith or quit the Lord. It also gives us ways to help overcome the great temptation to give up and quit. It's not as if it's a new phenomenon. The passage that we just read, <laughs> Jesus himself is saying, you're going to be beaten and whipped. You're going to be persecuted. They're going to chase you from pillar to post and all kinds of bad things that happen to you. And what does he say? Don't quit. I'm telling you now these things are going to happen. Don't quit. Now the opposite of quitting is patience. Patience. Patience is a Christian virtue and a mark of a spirit-filled life. Paul in Galatians 5.22, he says, the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience. Patience is that ability to remain under. I have an image in my mind about what patience means. You ever see movies, old movies, especially about Superman? There's usually something like this in most of the comics. When I was a kid, I had all the Superman comics. And you know, the bridge is out or the railroad track is out and the train is coming and it's filled with people and Superman, you know, he hasn't got time to go repair the track. So he just kind of, you know, he lays down like this, like in the picture here, and the train just goes over him. You know? that's, that's, the, that's the word picture for patience. <laughs> the ability, excuse me, I'm, I'm, I'm the ability to, to bear under. You're the one who's under. And what's on top is the train of life. And whatever that train happens to be carrying. Sometimes life hits us with a train. And we can either quit or show patience. We can Remain under the train of life that passes overhead. The Bible gives us many accounts of men who were tempted to quit, but chose to be patient, chose to remain under during their times of difficulty. I'd like to talk about a few of these people because their temptation to quit was due to some of the more common reasons that people use today to quit serving the Lord. For example, some are tempted to quit because they are overwhelmed by work, like Moses. Moses began well, but it wasn't long before he was so loaded down with responsibilities and work that his own father-in-law, Jethro, counseled him to delegate the work to other leaders in the nation. We read in Exodus chapter 18, it says, Moses' father-in-law said to him, the thing that you are doing is not good. And what he was doing is work, 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 work. He said, you will surely wear out both yourself and these people who are with you, for the task is too heavy for you. You cannot do it alone. Now listen to me, I will give you counsel and God be with you. You be the people's representative before God and you bring the disputes to God. Then teach them the statutes and the laws and make known to them the way in which they are to walk and the work that they are to, uh, they are to do. Furthermore, you shall select out of all the people able men who fear God, men of truth, those who hate dishonest gain, and you shall place these over them as leaders of thousands, of hundreds, of fifties, of tens. 
Let them judge the people at all times, and let it be that every major dispute they will bring to you, but every minor dispute they themselves will judge, so it will be easier for you and they will bear the burden with you. If you do this thing and God so commands you, then you will be able to endure, and all these people will also go to their place in peace. Jethro wanted Moses, or warned Moses, that if he followed his advice in this matter, he would be able to endure <coughs> in his ministry. Overwork is the, is the number one reason why good people quit serving the Lord. Good-willed members or new Christians take on way too much responsibility too quickly and they become discouraged when they see that many others are not doing a thing to help. Or leaders in various areas find that if they're going to get things done, They've got to do it themselves. In the work of the Lord, there are always more needs and more things to do than time or energy and resources. It's easy to feel overwhelmed. It's easy to get overcommitted. Quitting everything seems like a great solution, but not the way to solve problems. The best way to deal with the sheer volume of work in church is the following. First of all, find a balance. Church work is important, but not the only important thing in life. Caring for family, of course, and self and career, those are important also. Try to allot a portion of time and resources to serve the church that will leave appropriate time and energy for other things. Pick a spot or a few spots where you can serve effectively and focus on these things. Number two, train and delegate. The best way to avoid being overwhelmed is to cultivate others to do the work that you are doing and let them do it. Every minister, elder, deacon, teacher, ministry leader should consciously be looking for and actually training someone to help them with their work. We get swamped and we get worn out because we don't train others or we don't allow others to do the work even if it's not done our way. That's the hard thing, isn't it? Isn't that the hard thing <laughs> in training somebody? Yeah, I'd like to train somebody who's going to do it my way. <laughs> so I don't train anybody because that way I get to do it my way all the time. Yeah, that's the thing about training somebody else. You've got to let them learn how to do it their way. And then recharge spiritually. Spiritual fatigue from serving the Lord is not solved by merely getting enough sleep. We need to recharge our spiritual batteries with prayer and Bible reading and time alone with the Lord in order to be refreshed. Working for the Lord is rewarding, but if we don't learn to focus and balance our efforts, if we don't train others to help and renew ourselves spiritually, burnout will bring us to quitting altogether. Another reason why uh, people quit, they're overwhelmed by pain. They're overwhelmed by pain. Job's wife is an example of this. Not everybody suffers as many tragedies in one day as Job, but many Christians suffer one painful episode after another until quitting God and life seems like the only alternative. This was not Job's response, but his wife reacted in this way. Remember, she lost her wealth as well. She lost her children too. She lost her position and the affections of her husband also. She suffered too. And what did she tell Job to do? She said, why don't you just curse God and die? Job 2 verse 9. This was probably her own attitude and response as the pain of suffering washed away her faith. In 2019, we still have death and divorce and illness and stress of work and caring for children or elderly parents until we've got nothing left. We got nothing. Never mind something for the Lord, we got nothing left for us. People are weak spiritually because they're young in the faith or they've neglected their faith and so they become vulnerable when bad times come. 
Job survived the flood of suffering and pain that came his way because he was strong spiritually and his faith was well grounded. Weak Christians have no trouble maintaining their faith with minimal effort or service or study in the good times. Go to church every other week, look at the Bible every once in a while, pray on special occasions. But when tragedy strikes, when life turns sour, when suffering persists month after month, they wonder why their faith won't sustain them and they find it easy to give up believing and hoping in God. The only way to have a strong faith in times of trouble is to prepare for those times by building faith during times of peace. Regular Bible class and worship, regular reading, regular times of fellowship with the saints, regular service, regular giving. It's that steady eddy type of faith that gets you ready for the bad time. These types of spiritual exercises will build one's faith so that it'll be able to withstand the storms of life when they come. And brothers and sisters, I guarantee you that they will come. No one gives much thought to levees or storm walls or solid construction, but you're sure glad you build it right when a 175 mile an hour hurricane runs through. Well, it's the same thing with faith. We may not give much thought to the value of Sunday morning service or uh, being a regular Bible reader or developing uh, close ties with the brothers and sisters in the church. You know? Why? Because that's time consuming and it requires effort. But when your life falls apart, it's good to know that you have a faithful friend and a faithful heart to get you through. And then some quit because they are overwhelmed by sin. Demas is my example for that. Of course, a common reason why people quit the church, even though they hate to admit it, is sin, personal sin. They stop coming and give lots of excuses like, well, I'm too busy, got other priorities. But the real problem is that coming to church interferes with their sinning. <laughs> it's hard to be continually sexually immoral and take communion each week. It's hard to consume pornography and then come here and then consume the Lord's Supper. It's very hard to do. Saturday night I'm taking in pornography. Sunday morning I'm taking in the Lord's Supper. You know, it's one of those things you got to give. It's difficult to abuse ourselves with drugs or alcohol or other substances and then hear sermons about self-control and Christian living. You know, who wants to hear that? It's impossible to serve God, the God of mammon, the God of money and success, and be part of a group that is trying to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. And do both at the same time. You can only serve one effectively. It's hypocritical to call oneself a Christian, but devote all of our time to pleasure or things or games or work or self and give nothing or next to nothing in time and resources or effort to the Lord. I know, people say, there are only 24 hours in the day. Yeah, I know. I know, that's not an excuse, that's a reality. Paul had such a disciple named Demas. For a time he traveled with the inner circle of missionaries like Luke and Mark, even helping while Paul was imprisoned. Later on, Paul says of him that he quit the work, he quit the Lord, he quit the church, not because of overwork or hardship, but because he loved this present world. 2 Timothy 4.10, for Demas having loved this present world has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. He was a good example of one who quit simply because he would rather be involved in the things of this world rather than the things of the kingdom of God, the church. Sin keeps people out of heaven because it takes them out of the church here on earth first. And you can't get there if you're not here now. You can't get to heaven later if you're not in the church now. That's how it works. Now do you know why I've preached this lesson today aside from simply transferring this 
important information. I've explained why people quit for two reasons. Number one, many among us have quit for the very reasons that I mentioned. You know, the Lord adds to our number each year, absolutely, but Satan manages to subtract numbers as well. Because you see, both of them are at work. The Lord is at work, but Satan is at work too. They're both at work. If all those who quit in the last 20 years were here today, this building would not hold everybody. Another reason for this lesson, many more of you will be tempted to quit in the future for the very same reasons that people have quit in the past. Nothing has changed about this since the beginning of time. Satan cannot take the Christian's reward of heaven from him. The only way the Christian loses eternal life in the future is by quitting on the Christian life that he has now. That's the only way it happens. Please, don't ever quit because you will regret it if you do. You'll regret it, first of all, because Jesus may come and you'll be counted with the quitters and the unbelievers and He'll say, I never knew you. And number two, with the Lord's help, we'll succeed in establishing a strong church here for the future generations and in doing so, we will be able to rejoice with all of the faithful brethren who came before us and laid the groundwork for the church that has served us and our families now. These babies that are going to be born and these little children running around, we're building the strong congregation here for them to grow up in, for them to be married in, for them to have their children in, and for them to go forward in the future long after we're gone. And don't quit, don't quit, number three, because we need each other. We need the help and the presence and the prayer and the effort of every single one of the people here today. Don't quit because without you, this congregation is not what it should and what it can be. So if you've quit in your heart, but your body is still in the building, change your mind and ask God to renew your spirit so you can be re-energized to do your work or to be strengthened, to be faithful or to be forgiven and restored. Whatever you need to do to make sure that you don't quit, do it today and do it now as we stand and as we sing our song of encouragement.